it's been a while since I've done a crochet tutorial. Hopefully I'm going to get back into the habit of making more of those again. But today I'm going to teach you how to do the puff stitch. Now the puff stitch is a decorative stitch. It's what all the little nubblies are on this. Um, I'm personally working on the ABC afghan, so this is just part of the bottom row. It's got X, Y, Z on it, and another heart in the other corner. It will have the entire alphabet, but for charted afghans, you do start at the bottom and work your way to the top. But anyway, so the puff stitch is good both as a decorative stitch for doing detailing, for doing designs and things, as a border on things. Although if you do it as a border, you do have to do uh, one row of single crochets outside of where these go, otherwise you won't be able to close your puffs in. That kind of defeats the purpose, it won't work right, so just make sure you have one extra around the border from wherever you're going to be doing them if you choose to use a puff stitch border. But anyway, so these are not that hard to do. They look a lot more impressive than they really are, honestly, but yeah, I'm going to show you how they work. So puff stitches are always worked from the back side of the work. Let me flip it over. Oops, get back in there, hook. You can obviously use different yarns and hook sizes. I'm just using um, a size H and using um, Karen Simply Soft, but again, this is totally, it depends on the project, but you can do it with whatever yarn and whatever hook size is appropriate for that yarn. And this is a little bit tangled, so I'm trying to get it untangled, but for now it'll have to do. So anyway, what you're gonna do is there is a little bit of a trick to it. I'm gonna show you it. So you're going to yarn over once, go into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over again, go into that same stitch, drop another loop, yarn over again, into the stitch, drop another loop, and then one more time, yarn over, into the stitch. It's this fourth one that's tricky. Drop another loop. And if you've done it correctly, I believe there should be nine loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so and then you're going to draw your yarn, not through quite all of them. You're going to draw through all except the last uh, loop on your hook. You may have to wiggle it a little to get it in there. And then once you get it to these two here, then you just single crochet into the top and then single crochet into the next stitch to close your puff. And then you might want to jab it with your finger to push it out so it puffs out on the other side of your work. So I'll show it to you again. Yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, and draw up a loop. And then sometimes I uh, force the, uh, the loops over the fattest part of the hook to give me a little more wiggle room for this step. Sometimes I go through them individually wiggling my way through until I get all the way back. If I get stuck, sometimes I'll just start over, but I got them through this time. So then, boom, and boom. The looser you do it, the easier it is to get through them. So part of my problem is just that I'm going too tightly for this, but I'll show you guys one more time. Yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, into the stitch, draw up a loop, and then through all but the last one. Come on, let's go. And then through the top, and a single crochet into the next stitch. And that is all there is to it. Um, if you're using a chart, that'll show you where to do your puffs. If not, generally you can space them out for a border with one puff, one single crochet, one puff, one single crochet, to get a border such as this one. But yeah, so it's not much different at all from following any other chart like you would for color work. You're just doing puff stitches instead of different colors. So hopefully this helped you guys. If you have any questions about anything, 
feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help you, and hopefully you learned something, and I hope to do more tutorials soon. So, till next time, bye!